Hey guys and welcome to my second tutorial. Um, I'm sorry that it took so long, but I had to go and do some real life stuff. But I'm back on my computer now, so it's cool. Um, this one we're going to be doing furnishing the house, so we're going to cover static objects, dynamic objects, containers, animated objects, and doors, as well as furniture that you can interact with. Um, to start up, we're going to start with some static objects, and these are going to take up pretty much most of your interiors. They're things that won't move, so tables and stuff like that. And barrels. Not the container barrels, but just barrels you can't interact with. And this is going to be the majority of what your environments consist of. First up, we're going to search for table. Uh, it's probably going to to all. Um, and just drop anyone in. So common table 01 is what I've got here. Um, best to turn grid snap and snap to angle off for this because you can get better placement. So F to hit the nearest collision surface so if you press F it will just drop it straight down onto the surface rather than manually moving it yourself. So if I press F it will just automatically drop there which is better than doing it by eye. So now I'm going to show you two new tools, duplicate, I think I've already shown that, and the search and replace tool. So a quick way to make multiple items of furniture is to duplicate an item you already have. So control D and then you would press control and F on the selected item and this would replace it so you don't have to manually search. So as you can see here I'm searching for common table 01 which is what I have here and I'm replacing it with this so I could have 02. And it's, if you know the names of stuff it's a lot quicker than manually searching or you can get variations so if I have um, a barrel and I wanted fish food fish food just fish and instead of like searching for it later on I could just press control F on this barrel and then it would find a variation of the barrel so yeah nice barrel food 01 I could duplicate that so that's pretty much about it for static items the next thing is going to be dynamic items and this is for stuff that has physics so potato if you drop some potatoes in there these are um, there's two types I think so, um, one is like this you can put it in your inventory and the other type is you can move it around but you can't take it in your inventory that's the, that's the only difference so something like a wheel so yeah like this is another type of dynamic item but you just can't remove it. Now the way that you can settle these is either manually by manually placing these um, but when you get in game it might like you know roll off like the plate or whatever you want to put it on so the way that you would do this is to toggle the physics simulation while in editor so in real time there's a little HK button here with a ball bouncing select the physics object and then click that and then you could allow it to settle in the editor. So this is how you place things, you know, on shelves or in plates or kettles or whatever. Um, and you can do this for multiple objects. So if I just duplicate this, so now I've got three potatoes. And if I wanted them to, you know, scatter around a lot like more naturally rather than hand placing them I ugh. you could just lift them up and then you know use the settle button have excel and allow them to fall that didn't really work so there we go yeah and then you can settle stuff like that Another thing with these is if you want something to look like it's mounted on a wall, for example, if I wanted this to you know look like it was mounted on the wall, you could right click it and then toggle this checkbox. So right click, edit, and then there's don't have Excel. And what this means is um, if you don't touch it, it will look like it's you know on a wall or stuck into an object, and it will only react once a force is applied so if I cast a spell on it or shoot an arrow at it or bump into it it will then have the physics applied but until that happens it will look like it's stuck in an object or hanging off a wall 
because that's useful for making like weapon plaques or something like that. Now containers, since this isn't a house, let me. Uh, there's two type of containers, and one of them is safe, and one's not safe. And the no respawn barrels, these are considered safe. So whatever's in there now, once I take it out, it will never respawn, and any items I put in there are going to be considered safe. Um, then there's barrel like this, barrel food 01. This isn't safe because once I take the stuff out of there there's a possibility it will respawn and when it does any items in there could be lost so if you want to make containers that you can store stuff in for your house it's best to make sure that they're no respawn another useful thing is if you double click on the barrel or a barrel a container right click wait, and then go to this in the reference window go to edit base and this will show you the pot uh, potential items that you can get so if I preview the calculated results for level 1 I could get lavender with a value of 4 gold um, and then 54 I'd get berries or something um, it doesn't really work that well with ingredients barrels but with items that contain treasure like treasure chests or urns you can get you know valuable items um, I don't think we're going to be using this feature in this tutorial for the house but it's good useful to know for dungeons and stuff like that Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is um, cover animated objects quickly. Now I've got two bedrolls here, and the difference between them is, in one of them you can lie down. If you toggle M, you'll get something called a marker. Now you'll notice this bed doesn't have it, this means you can't interact with it, you'd have to place a marker down, or a piece of furniture with a marker already attached, like this. So you toggle M for markers, and basically this is a static object and interactive ones have a different icon they have something like this like a little chair whereas a static one just has a I don't know what that is but it has that so if you want something to be interacted with make sure that it's got this icon and it has markers and you toggle markers with M uh, something to note is proper placement of the markers these little blue squares are the entry and exit nodes you have to make sure they're not stuck in walls or something or like hanging out of another object because NPCs or you will get glitched or trapped in the walls or floors if they're placed poorly. The next thing we're going to place in this tutorial is going to be some doors. Um, it's best to have snap to grid and snap to angle on when placing these, so Q and Control Q, because then it just slots nicely in between the divider in the bottom, the bottom room. Um, a little tip: um, Bethesda on the Creation Kit website they say to make the doors open away from the player. I think this is mainly more towards dungeons, but um, we're going to apply it here anyway just because, well, for no reason actually. So, to do this, you would click on your door, right click, edit, oh god, edit, and then there's a little checkbox that says open by default. And this is good for if you want the, like a house to look like somebody's already been there, or containers to look like they've already been looted, so you know they're just already open. And it also, you know, it's helpful for telling you what way doors open, because you can't really tell once they're shut. The next thing we're going to cover is animated objects or an effect. So this would be something like a fire. Oops, I'm in the wrong category. So yeah, I've got some embers here for my fireplace, and similar to Havoc Settling, there's a button that will allow you to preview um, preview the effects. It's the FX button, and it's I think it's got a waterfall symbol on it, I can't tell. If you click this, it'll basically just play the effect for you. Um, it's not so useful on fires. Um, things like fire, you're going to have to add the light source separately. From so it'll have I think it has the sounds already attached to it, but you'll have to add the, um, the light source separately, and I'll cover that in a later tutorial. So yeah, if you followed my first tutorial, tutorial or any other tutorial, you should pretty much have the skills to place all these items, as it's pretty much the same principle as placing set pieces. 
Um, if not, then you can go back to whatever the tutorial you watched or my one, just to you know get a refresher on the shortcuts or something. Um, just a couple of tips. Um, make sure you, well, not make sure, but it helps if you use Control F on items. If you're having a lot of item items, so I've got a lot. I'm spazzing out at the moment. So I've got loads of wine bottles here, and they were all the same. If I press Control F, you know, replace them or the books, so you just add variants to your items and make sure they have Excel the items are properly settled before you turn it off otherwise they can still roll about when you enter a room and it just looks a bit weird make sure you check your NPC nodes or I mean interactive nodes so that you're not getting caught up or you know you're not glitching out when you sit down and that's pretty much it also if you can't find the name of something because you know sometimes they're named obscurely like cups they're not called cups they're called tankards or um, goblets or something odd then you can either drop a comment and I'll see if I can help it depends how many comments there are um, or you can just load up Skyrim find a house and you know just touch up their stuff to find out what's you know what it's called um, another trick while not necessary for um, static objects like desks because you mess up the scale of them but it's just to, you know slightly adjust the scale of um, dynamic objects just to you know add a little bit of difference to them like make the lanterns a little bit bigger and it just again it's the same as the control f function it just ugh, it just helps you know add a little bit of difference to what you're seeing so yeah that's pretty much it for this tutorial um i think my next tutorial is going to be on nav meshing this house so that you can bring your npcs or know companions can get in and out and you know navigate around and also interact with the well, companions can also interact with the um, these chairs yeah um, thanks for watching and I hope to see you at my next video